started. Um, so we have uh, the viewer pipelines. We have the, uh, the maintenance viewer, the voice viewer, um, and there's also, I didn't put on the list here, but there's also an assets in HTTP viewer that's uh, going, that's in QA, I think, and is going to be on RC momentarily, or real soon now, anyway. Um, and then we have the 64-bit project viewer and the 360 snapshots project viewer. Um, we're we're not making any voice changes on Linux. Vivox isn't making any voice changes on Linux, so we're not making any voice changes on Linux. Um, uh, it doesn't work any worse, as far as I know. It doesn't work any worse than it ever has. It's just that it doesn't get in, it hasn't hasn't gotten improvements in a couple of years, and there are none planned for Linux. Sorry, but even if we wanted to, we couldn't. Uh, so that's the viewer pipeline that's out there. Um, there are, uh, at this point, we, we don't have any timeline for, for Disconnect for disabling older voice versions. No, that was part of a an effort that we've put on the back burner. So we may or may not get to it. <laughs> uh, the um, so that's that. Uh, other stuff. Uh, that I wanted to make sure we had an opportunity to discuss is the, the couple of different changes to region and parcel access that are out there. Um, we have sort of two sets of changes in various stages of the release pipeline. Um, one is the change we blogged about earlier, earlier this week uh, about the limits going up a little bit, but at the high end, only premium users can can use the extra capacity. Um, that's going well in test and will be on a larger release channel next week. Um, we don't have any more plans right now for prim capacity changes. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see how that works out when it gets onto more regions. I mean. So far, there have been no problems reported with it. Um, so that's all good. And it, it has been on a couple of chronically crowded regions. Um, we, we will be looking at avatar capacity as we make other changes to the system. Um, if the opportunity to make the numbers go up presents itself, we'll probably do that. But um, We'll see. Um, well, that's that's what we want to hear, Blizzy. Um, the well, we'll see what happens. Um, right now, you know, we're we're going to be putting out um, a new uh, uh, a simulator on a new OS platform, newer version of Linux. Uh, in RC next week, uh, we will be looking very closely at its performance numbers. Um, and then we're going to almost immediately start working on moving it up to a, yet another version. So there's a lot of platform work going on to modernize the, the, the platform, the backend platform. Um, the other region and parcel change that's on its way through the pipeline is that we're introducing a new estate manager capability where you can set a region so that 
parcel owners are not allowed to make parcels not public access. That is, they're not allowed to create band lines. Um, lots of people, lots of landowners, parcel region owners do this in their covenants now, in their rental agreements. They say you're not allowed to do it, but there's no technical enforcement of that. We're providing a technical enforcement for that. Um, the ban list still applies, but you can't say only this set of people, the public is not allowed. Um, where we already have that capability in uh, a simulator that's working its way through the release pipeline. Um, the corresponding viewer UI changes are not out yet, but will be probably next week. Um, we are not doing anything to your rights to remove public access. We're giving region owners control over that. So, wait, you're adding an option for, for state managers to be able to disable the ability of people to turn off public access? Right. Wow, I you love, totally I, got that right. I, I, I love you people so much right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more, than a, more than a couple of landlords have mentioned this as, you know, their number one request. So we're going to make it happen. This is this, another this in a long series rule. of... So much uh, easier. This is, this is an, another in our series of make things better for, for landowners. Um, it, yeah, I don't, I don't, your question is incomplete anymore. I think he means, um, will that affect turning uh, on the ability to Disable access to anyone that's not in the group. Yes, because disabling access to anyone who is not in the group creates Means band creating, lines. Right. Great. So I love if you your landlord says this estate is public access, then the only people you get to exclude are people who are on your ban list. Uh, in the state, I, the states I manage, it's public access, but you're allowed to use security orb. We just don't want to see band lines because they're okay. ugly. Correct, and the security orb will work the same way, right? Uh, it won't be affected. There's nothing to do with anything, right? Now you will notice that talking about this gets complicated. Um, yeah, there are lots of double negatives, and that's always confusing. Part of the reason this is complicated is because the terminology is bad. Um, so we're trying to um, simplify it a little bit, and I make no claims to uh, have a solution that will make it completely It, it, it makes perfect sense, but I've been awake for like a day and a half, so everything probably makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really close to crystal clear right now. So um, I'm getting at the fact that we're going to be making changes to the UI to help the UI reflect reality better. Um, and I know people hate change to UI. So we're thinking about this a lot and trying to do this very carefully. Um, and it's coming soonish. As soon as I have a viewer to share with you, we will share it um, so that people can scream about how there used to be a thing they were able to do and now they can't. So the normal pretty much. Yeah. Right. So. Um, that's coming, and uh, if your viewers are used by landowners, they will probably want that change pretty quickly. So we are going to try to make it easy for you to pick that up. Um, what is bug 4994? Uh, yes, Whirly, and fix that. 
Yes. It's the one I just described to you all as we just talked. Yeah, yeah. That was, that's a weird one. But yes, we're going to try to make the UI make sense, which. In just this one particular case, I'm not, not all <laughs> I mean, the UI. There's lots of parts of the UI that don't make sense. Well. I, I like the entire achievable. organization of the estate panel doesn't make sense half the time. Achievable uh, goals. <laughs> I mean, it's achievable, but you, but it would be fire and brimstone. Um, Probably a witch hunt. Uh, we're, you know, as usual, we're more than happy to take well thought out. Uh, Proposals. And we'll discuss them. Uh, so, um, and I noticed that somebody, I don't know when somebody added this down at the bottom. When will open source build instructions be available for 64 bit? Um, uh, we will update the wiki build instructions to match the, the, the goal is always that the wiki build instructions tell you how to build viewer release. So when 64 bit gets to viewer release, we will try to get the, the wiki completely synchronized with that at that point. Um, in the meantime, we're more than happy to work through it with people individually on the open source dev list. Oh, oh, I, I had a question. Could the documentation on this capability be updated on this wiki page at some point? Because I'm trying to puzzle out how it works now for the open metaverse changes. Uh, Because the what is the, this? It, the behavior, okay. It's the oh no! I crashed. No. Uh, you're still in voice for a few more seconds. So I know, right? Come back. I'm a ghost. I'm a ghost. I I, I have to I have to grab a crash stack first. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, I'll look at this wiki page. Oh no, I crashed in the NVIDIA driver. But. Well, if there's not going to be any drama here, I'm going to go eat. I don't want drama, but I'm braced for it. I, I don't think you want griefers here, but I mean, eh, you never know. Oh, uh, have you done anything with regards to the, um, Streaming music volume yet? Uh, no. I, I don't know. I... It's me, and I didn't, and I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> was there a Jira? <laughs> if there's a Jira for that, we can we can get it in the main queue, and it'll it'll get attention. Okay, I back. It it crashed in the mysterious singleton dependency manager thing. Uh, oh, the you're you're running in the right. Okay. Okay. So, what was this about a Jira about something? Who, what, when, where? Oh, that's the that was the we've we've had a uh, an, a running discussion here about making the default volume for 
music and media be lower? Oh, uh, what would we what, what, what what you say about my it, uh, request about that wiki page and possibly getting it poked at? Uh, I would need to know what's not right about it. Um, what does it the need? viewer behavior changed the LL viewer and it doesn't look for 502 responses anymore. It just kind of times out mysteriously. And I'm not sure what how it works now. Uh, uh, because Ryder changed it to just time out and then reconnect, but. I, I, I'm not sure of the length required for the timeout, and is it using Keep Alive? Well, it's doing HTTP 1.1, so it's doing a persistent connection. Okay, so it's persist. So it just. I don't know what the timeout is. Okay, yeah. That should be in the code, though. It's, it's not in the viewer code. It, weird. I'm not sure the server timeout because I have it set to... It, it, it's, a, it's very bizarre how it works now. Okay, probably the best thing for to do is to try to do a careful write-up of what the question is and put it on the open source dev list and I'll um, I'm sure Ryder and or Simon will be able to figure okay. out. I asked Ryder already and he said he had no idea. <laughs> Oh, well, that's, that's, put it on the list, and we'll get something tracked down. But I need a little bit better formulated question, because I, I really don't understand what it is. I have no idea what this is. This is the first uh, time I've ever looked at this wiki page. Basically, the core thing that makes everything work. Um, Region right. connections, teleporting, etc. This is the long pole connection, right? Yeah, that that's the main event queue. Right. Right. Uh, describe what you think changed, and I'll be glad to try and puzzle it out. But I... I offhand, I have no idea. Um... What I think changed is the server changed to using keep alives and it j the viewer just hits its own HTTP timeout and then reconnects and the server keeps the connection alive. And the viewer's timeout is shorter than the server's by like a second. I have no idea. Because when I was poking at that cap using curl, it was timing out at exactly 31 seconds, and the viewer's timeout's 30 seconds. Okay. Other topics? Uh, how's asset HTTP going? Uh, as far as we can tell, it's working perfectly. That's why uh, it's going to RC. So, okay, I'll I'll just uh, gently shove that into the viewer and you have uh, if you have data to the contrary, we'd love to hear about it. I haven't had any problems. Um, Naran, we are. Um, we we have a project. That's been kind of a background priority thing that we've been working on for a while now to um, do a bunch of careful measurements of what the what the rendering costs on a wide range of systems are for a wide range of second life uh, rendering features. Um, 
we've pretty much we've just about got that set of tests def well defined and then what we're going to do is turn it over to a bunch of people who are going to actually execute a lot of tests and collect a lot of numbers and then we will crunch the numbers and look at them and decide what the appropriate changes to rendering cost calculations should be um, and when we've done all that uh, we will come and tell you about it, probably here, maybe other places. Um, so, yes, there is something being done about it, but um, right now all we have is a test design. We don't actually have test results yet, so there isn't much to say about it. I would say that if you know of types of content that are problematic that aren't already documented in existing JIRAs, then... Uh... It would be helpful if you could uh, file the JIRAs and let us know. Right. So, Aaron, the Maitreya mesh bodies aren't that bad. It's the Belize ones that have like 400,000 polygons. Um, well, we don't, we don't want to hold the conversation in terms of brand names, obviously. But um, high poly meshes are certainly one of the things that we're already going to be looking at. Yeah, uh, you know, this is not the sort of thing that we have an opportunity to change without some people being happy and some people being unhappy. But what we are going to try to do is to make the numbers more accurately reflect the real costs uh, of rendering things to the extent that we can do that without making catastrophically not backwards compatible changes. So it's a real juggling act. And when we can tell you what we think we're going to be able to do with it, we certainly will share that with you. But we're not there yet. Other than the fact that we can tell you that we are actually actively engaged in it, trying to, trying to come up with better numbers. We will try not to break anything. It, it may be that the costs for some things will change. The rendering cost calculation does have unrealistic expectations as to what actually has a performance impact, in my opinion. Well, that's, that's what we're trying to discover. So if you know of particular ways in which it's wrong and you can produce good examples we can include in the test, then do that because that's how you'll be able to influence what we do. Well, that's the best hope you have of influencing what we do. Um, anecdotal reports about this or that object or brand or rendering feature that are not supported by cases we can include in a mathematical examination of the problem will be uh, listened to and that'll probably be pretty much the end of it so getting one level more detail is is really helpful and will be much more impactful Aaron, the Belize bodies are 200 to 400,000. Yeah, well, we had in the in the old avatars we had sneakers that were something like that bad. I mean, so um, we don't want to do any finger pointing. We just want to see if we can make things better. Um, Aaron, they are. I have tools in my viewer to right click people and go, "How many polygons do they have?" Um Yes. As usual, our calculations are one of the things that we will require that you leave the way we ship them. It doesn't make any sense yeah. to have different viewers calculating the, or the rendering cost. I, I just leave those alone, and then I just add separate tools to view right. impact data. Right. And in fact, the way the server side... Um, uh, compiles the rendering calculations and shares them back to other viewers, 
if your numbers are way off, they won't be included in the calculation. So, um, and and right now, the way the viewer code works is that it uses its own numbers for um, making any decisions about whether or not to render things. So, uh, it actually doesn't help you. Change yours. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's ongoing, and hopefully we'll have progress to report for you probably not real soon because it isn't going to it isn't a high priority project but it's it's moving forward Other other topics of interest? Uh, I can't think of anything good. Do we all get a half hour back? I'm not sure. Does Niren have anything he needs to rant about? I also have something from the wiki. Messages, variable two. Uh, what is this? Also might be that the viewer converts Big Indian and Little Indian automatically in the message system. So it may be documented as Big Indian and the message is actually Big Indian, but the viewer automatically converts it to Little Indian for ease of use within the Little Indian architecture client code. I would I would like to have that stuff be correct. So if you'll file Jira against it, we can uh, check it against the code, and then we'll know. And we'll the code, uh, the network code, the UDP network code does do automatic conversions for Indianness. Yeah. So if you implement something in the viewer and it's documented as Big Indian, the message actually is Big Indian on the network layer. But in the viewer layer, it's automatically converted to Little Indian from, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just an ease of use standpoint because then you have to write big Indian code on a Little Indian architecture and it turns into a giant sadness. Yeah. Uh, was there anything being done to increase the number of people on the ban list for estate and parcel owners? Um, that topic has come up a bunch. Um, I'm not sure where the priority of that has landed. Um, I'll look into it. Um, it. It seems as though it's one of those numbers we ought to be able to make bigger, but I, I can't make any promises. Yeah. It does come up internally from time to time, too. Yeah, if we if we change that number, we'll probably make a corresponding change to make the interface better. Everybody agrees the interface needs to be improved. Ban this interface, uh, and as which I've is said before, I'll be manage. more than happy to take uh, proposals for how to make the interface better. Um, proposals that are fully worked out and preferably implemented. Uh, LL 64 bit client should work back to Windows 7. Uh, it, we are testing it on everything back to Windows 7. Um, the experience to date, which is not built, which is not based on very large sample sizes yet, because not that many people are using it, um, but the measurements we're getting so far is that uh, Windows 7 has a very significantly higher crash rate than anything later, and Windows 10 is by far the best. Um, crash rate is really low on Windows 10. So... Um, there's actually lots of good reasons to upgrade.
Niren, quit ranting about Windows 10 and just use Windows 10. <laughs> um, I, I, I have no... I have no... Um, I have no skin in that game. I couldn't care less what version of... Uh, On a version of Windows, any, an extended security-only support. Except using it. that... I'm just sharing with you that the people on the newer versions of of all the operating systems uh, have a lot fewer crashes than people on the old versions. This should not really surprise anybody. Um, certainly doesn't surprise me. It's a fact I thought people should know. The fact you still have uh, people using XP should tell you the fact of you should not have people using Windows XP. You should shun those people. <laughs> Gently. Well, we don't support XP anymore. So. Don't support XP, and I refuse to add support to it to anything I work on. I also don't support Vista. Vista can go sit in a corner as a special version of Windows that should never have existed. Um... Uh, the other thing we're doing in the 64-bit branch is we're improving the the OS version detection so that we will actually be able to report it on it more accurately. Because right now, they're we're we're not getting as we're getting a bunch of unknowns. In, which I mean, irritating. some of your problems come from the fact that a lot of your code is really um not good. All right, let's not get into that. Um, any other? No, there's no, nothing has changed on Snapchat 360. Um, that's on hold until the 64-bit viewer is healthier. Um, I keep hoping that we can start working on it again, but uh, people keep finding problems. I've been toying with moving the internal VFS cache to 64-bit uh Variables and file sizes. Um, I would I would love to have a conversation another time about um, whether the VFS is worth anything. I hate the Very VFS for the passion, that. but it needs to be larger. So I'm I'm crying at it. Well, my question is whether we should have it at all. So um, I mean, a flat file cache for everything would be great, but. I don't want to do that effort. Well, I might. Believe in you, Oz. I believe in you and your team to do that. <laughs> okay. Well, I appreciate your faith. All right. Um, if we don't have any other topics, uh, I, think I mean, we'll Mirren, you do things to OpenGL that you should never do. Just turn on a debug GL context and have fun for a while. Stops telling you that you're doing it wrong. Because OpenGL will very, very, very happily tell you when you're doing it wrong. Uh, Worley, we're, it's, it's a sign that we're thinking about that problem and what we might be able to do about it. Um, so, uh, no promises yet. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, when we, yeah, you know, I got to change like one app, one part of my outfit, you know, he every has to now keep with that whole great and powerful Oz theme. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, we've been talking uh, about the big textures on mesh as a possible project for a while now. So, uh, you know, no, no new announcements. It'd be great to see happen. To Um, I never want to go shopping, really. Never. I want to go shopping, but I don't like spending the money to go shopping. Uh, well, you know, I, it's that the whole process problem. that I don't like. I don't. I don't care about the money part. Um, 
also the process of having to go find things on the marketplace, which can be painful and agonizing. <laughs> Alright, I will uh I will see you all in two weeks. Thanks very much. Niran, I totally, totally believe in your ability to enable OpenGL debugging and make the viewer run without throwing an assert at you for doing it wrong. Uh, the setting is render debug GL. Enable that. Yeah, that, that, if you enable that and restart the viewer, uh, it'll spawn you an open GL debug context instead of a normal context, and then it'll start screaming at you in the log file and crashing with asserts every time you blink.